I can't hear you. The record player. Loud. Right. It's all right, sir. It's only my spaghetti. Daddy, this is Dumbo. He's a laughing chamber pot. A what? With the group, like Mantovani. And look, do you realise that it's three o'clock in the morning? What are the neighbours going to think with all this boogie-woogie blaring out? Boogie what? Boogie! Music! I mean, don't misunderstand me. I'd like to see you having... Karen, will you stop talking when I'm snogging to you? I mean, nobody can say that I'm a square. No? No! I've got a rug with the best of them in my time. There you are, you see. Oh, blimey, it's the fuzz. Good evening, miss. We've just had a complaint phoned in about the noise of your party. Now, do you think you can keep it down a bit? Yes, all right. It'll be breaking up soon anyway. Thank you, miss. Somebody phoned in to complain. What a mean trick. Who was it? I'm sorry, miss. I can't reveal that. All right, Mr. Glover. Any more trouble? Just phone in again. Traitor. Officer. Officer. That was a bit tactless, wasn't it? Why didn't you put a stop to it yourself, sir? Well, I, I didn't want to be unpopular, you see. Whereas you, chap, you're unpopular already. <laughs> oh, no, no, not with me, of course. I think you policemen are wonderful. Oh, I think you're sweet as well, sir. Now, why don't you go back to bed? Yes. Yes, perhaps all right. Good night. There's still some food left if you want some. Oh. Now, now look what you've done! <laughs>
a pint of cream, please. Okay, Nanny. Thank you. Oh, good morning, Mr. Patrick. Been for a nice early morning drive. That's right, Nanny. That's right. Well, you really ought to wrap up more in this weather. You'll get a nasty chill. Oh! Morning, Mr. Glover. Been out for an early morning drive. Should have taken more water with it, H.G. Look at this room, Nanny. I mean, why is it that the kids can't have a party without making such an appalling... Nanny, you look quite strange. Oh. I think I'll have breakfast before you tidy up, Nanny. I'll let... What's this? What sort of a party was it last night, Nanny? I don't know, Mr. Patrick. 38C. Are either of the girls a 38C, Nanny? No. Is it yours? Uh, no. It must belong to one of their friends. What? You're quite right. Dorothy Perkins. Now, look here. This is not good enough. It's a 38C. What more do you want? Chris bought it for a giggle, along with a monkey mask. A bit childish, isn't it? Prancing around in a monkey mask. Oh, Celia wanted to burn it. She suddenly decided to join the women's live. Good job she didn't burn her own. It would have been the great fire of London all over again. Was everything all right for you after the police left? Oh, yes. Fine, fine. Have you any idea what it is like lying down in the back seat of a motor car? Well... Don't answer that. Now, look here. I said you could have this party provided your guest had left by 12 o'clock. But they have. It's only ten o'clock now. Twelve at night. Trouble is, I'm far too soft with you two. Far too soft, Nanny. I'll give it another minute. After all, I am your father and I am responsible for you. You worry too much. You think we'll get pregnant if we sit on a warm bus seat. Uh, and as for you, young lady, you're growing up far too fast. When I was your age, I was two years younger. Who broke that? Richard. He jogged it with his elbow. But it was on top of the bookcase. So was Richard. Good grief. That young man is the clumsiest boy I've... You glued my newspaper to the table, and it's the crossword bit, too. Oh, really? Probably is I'm not hard enough. Not hard enough. If you say so. I do. Anyway, there are going to be a few changes around this house. I am going to draw up a list of rules. Again? Again. Rule one, there will be no more going to pyjama parties. Oh. In my pyjamas. Rule two, you will not go padding about the upstairs landing with nothing on. Why not? It's all good stuff. Very possibly, but the milkman has crashed his cart twice this month. Uh, thank you, Nanny. Rule three, you will keep me informed at all times where you are going, when you will be with, and who you will be back. <coughs> Nanny, this egg is hard boiled. Oh, dear. Oh, well, never mind. I'll have cornflakes. Oh, who can that be at this hour of the morning? Rule four. All prisoners attempting to escape will be shot. Exactly. Rule five. Oh, for goodness sake, what on earth next? Anna wants to leave home. What, again? Again. <sighs> it's Mr. Philip. Oh. Morning, girls. Hello, Uncle Philip. Another flying visit. No, no, no. It came by car. Good morning, Patrick. Hello, my darling. Hello. On my way to Newmarket. Coffee? Uh, thank you, Nanny. And how much do you want this time? That is no way to speak to your brother, Patrick. I popped in there on my way to Newmarket just to have a little quiet chat to my nieces. You hurt me dreadfully making remarks like that. How much? Ten quid. Uh, it's an absolute certainty for the 2.30. I had it straight from the stable boy's cousin's postman. How can it lose? Now, what's all this about you leaving home? I left home years ago. Not you, Anna. Well, I am 18. I want a little flat of my own. Spread my wings and be buffeted by the winds of experience. I want to drink deep from the cup of life, to grasp it with both hands and fulfill myself as a woman. Mm. Sounds reasonable enough. Do you want that loan or don't you? Do as your father says. Have you any idea how much it costs to rent a flat these days? I'm prepared to pay quite a lot for the right place. Two. Or even three pounds a week if it's self-contained. <laughs> Why not go to four and rent Windsor Castle? Well, she's got four, she can lend me three. You're not taking me seriously. No, I'm not going. Maybe in a year. 
Bobby Moore? Whatever happened to his other leg, Mr. Patrick? Thank God it wasn't Lester Pickett. Nyarkas snarled a curse. His hand flashed to his pocket, and he drew out a pearl-handled bun. G gun. Stop writing that drivel, Patrick, and listen to me. This is an investment. And what do you suppose this drivel is? Hand over the diamonds, he said, or I shall be forced to hoot. Shoot. If this wins, I can pay you back the five I borrowed last time. No, Philip. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll leave you my watch as security. It's solid gold. Philip, it's not. It is. It's on the pawn ticket. Uh, no, Philip. Very well, you will leave me no alternative. Run Bay is 0273, isn't it? Yes. Who are you phoning? Mother. What for? To tell her that you are constipated. Oh, Philip, you wouldn't do that. You know very well she'd be down here like a shop with a bottle of that homemade jollop. Oh, the choice is yours. Ten pounds or jollop. No, all right. Take it out of that. Thank you. Hello? <sighs> Patrick, hmm? it's for you. Who? Mother. Oh, Philip, really? <clears throat> Hello, Mother, darling. Hello, is that you, Patrick? Yes, yes. I, I, I just phoned to say... Um, to say... Hello, uh, Mother. Uh, <laughs> That was Philip. Oh, very good, dear. It sounded just like him. Hmm? Are you eating all your crusts? Crusts? Uh, oh, oh yeah, yes, Mother. Yes, I am, yes. Good. That's the way to make your hair nice and curly. <laughs> this calls for a large scotch. I haven't got any. You haven't got any? You mean you've gone completely bald? What? Don't worry, dear. You can always wear a teepee. Don't you mean a toupee, Mother? A teepee is a wigwam. That's the word. Wigwam. You can get them on the National Health. Now, what were you ringing me up about, dear? Well, I, I, I just phoned up to... Oh, yes, Mother, I phoned up to tell you I thought you ought to know. Philip is constipated. Swine! No, wine's no good. I'll see he gets the right thing. Jollop. I'll see you out, Philip. And I hope I lose every penny of your money. <laughs> Goodbye, Philip. Oh, are you going out? Off to look at flats. No. You do know your way to Park Lane, don't you? You coming? No, thanks. I want to work with the tiller, the hun. Daddy? Uh -huh. Gosh, your new book is coming along well. You write so fast, which is amazing, considering the high standard you keep up. Whatever it is, I can't afford it. Oh, it's not about money. Oh, well, it's nothing to do with me, then, is it? It's about Richard hmm? and me. Hmm. Uh, well, you see, last night, he finally, he actually, he finally did it. What? He wants to marry me. I should hope so. Oh, no, that's all he did. He proposed to me. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right, then. No, it isn't. You're far too young to get married. I'm 17 and three-eighths. You are still too young. You've never liked Richard, have you? Not since the barbecue, when he bit into his hot dog and the sausage shot into your ear. No, it, it isn't just that, He darling. said he was sorry, but you wouldn't listen. Well, I couldn't, could I, darling? Not with a sausage in my ear. <laughs> now, listen, darling. Every young girl of your age wants to get married, settle down, and build a little home, and have a nice large family. There's no harm in thinking that way. But in a year or two's time, you will realize how wise I was to have made you wait. You don't take me seriously either. That's right, darling. Hello? How's Mr. Nyarkas? No one of that name lives here. The book, Patrick. Oh, is, is that you, Georgie? Oh, the book. Oh, it's fine, fine, yes. I've just completed a page where the villain hoots the hero with a bun. What? Well, I can't concentrate lately, Georgie. Well, you'll have to concentrate. The publishers are on to me. Yeah, well, if it's not one thing, it's the other. The other? Well, the, the girls mainly. I mean, one of them's on about leaving home, and the other one wants to get married. I don't know. <laughs> Georgie, if you were a father, what would you do? Sell my story to the Sunday papers, I expect. Will you be serious? I mean, I'm very worried about them, you see. They're, they're at that awkward age. You've been saying that since they were four. Yes, but since the divorce, it's been getting worse. I don't know. I, I think I need some advice or something. Patrick, dear, I'm a literary agent, not a psychologist. I don't understand teenagers.
teenage girls, and I was one. Were you? Thank you very much. Why don't you chat up your local vicar? Vicar? N now, what would a vicar know about a thing like this? Oh, they're meant to be very good at sorting out people's problems. Georgie, you're not being at all helpful this morning. It's quite obvious to me that you're not in a very good mood. Goodbye. Vicar. <laughs> Vicar. I'm terribly sorry. I'm not interrupting, am I? Mm. I mean, you weren't having a quick prayer or anything, were you? No. <laughs> Just a touching up a cherub. I beg your pardon. I touch them all up occasionally. Oh, I see. It's the weather, you know. <laughs> um, uh, Glover. Uh, uh, Patrick Glover. I, um, I am... I, 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 I am a member of your flock, but I, I haven't been to church now for several weeks. Yeah. But I do remember you as a choir boy. As long ago as that, was it? Yes. I, I wondered if I might have a word with you. The best, uh, oh. But mind you, if it's not convenient... Hmm? If it's a bad time... It's about quarter past twelve. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> you see, I, I have a bit of a problem about my daughters. People don't uh, take care of their deceased, you know. Take Mr. Prendergast. Weed all over the grave. Did he really? Now, about my daughters. Yeah, birds don't seem to have any respect nowadays. Well, that's part of my problem, Larry. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm afraid this is all rather on the spur of the moment. I mean, normally I wouldn't come within a thousand miles. <clears throat> what I mean is, I, I have a bit of a problem, Vicar. Uh, a priest. I'm a father. Yes, so am I, and that's my problem. You see, my daughters, well, well, they, they haven't had a mother for several years. I see. Your wife has gone to a better place? Well, possibly. It all depends what you feel about Chelsea. Chelsea? Yes, she's living there with her husband. Her other husband. Her new husband, you see. We're divorced. You uh, make yourself comfortable. Pull up a chair. Thank you. you <clears throat> it was all very amicable, uh, quite one of the friendliest divorces you've ever known. I'm afraid I'm not conversant with these matters, Mr... Uh... Glover. Patrick... Uh, sit down, Mr. Glover. You see, none of my own little flock has strayed from their marital vows. Quite, yes. <clears throat> well, we thought it would be best if the girls lived with me. Till death do them, etc. Until they'd finished their education, actually. But you see, I've had to be sort of mummy and daddy to them both. And, well, my, my time as a writer has been taken up with... A writer, you say? Yes, you see, and the girls have been growing away from me. You're not the Patrick Glover by any chance? As a matter of fact, I am. How interesting. I've read all your books. I'm in the middle of one right now. Are you really? Yeah, please, please. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a writer myself, you know. <laughs> really? Not in your field, of course, but I, I have a little contribution here to Hither and Yon. I would value your opinion on it. Yeah, the lighter side. Uh, lighter sides of missionary work. Yeah. <laughs> I do trust I've not adopted to jocular town. Not gone too far? <laughs> not too droll? Oh, no, no, no. No, it's not funny at all. Yeah. Now, about my daughters. Daughters? Oh, yeah, of course, yes. Sir. How uh, old are they? Well, Karen is. Uh, and Anna's a little older, 18 ish. They do need a mother's guidance. In the great discotheque of life, they need the Gildan Eldie of maternal influence. And of course, 
The top ten. The what? Thou shalt not. Oh, that top ten. <laughs> yes, I think I see what you're getting at. You do? Yes. You think I should get married? I'd be the last to suggest that. You might think I was drumming up business. <laughs> oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> it does, as a matter of fact. If you're high. High? High church, you know. Oh, I see. <laughs> so I can only commend unto you the advice that Zainab gave unto the Melachites. Yes? Yes. And one more thing. Yes? Before you go. Hey. Or Tokra. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Mary. Please. Oh, sorry. Please. Oh, I can. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure. But... <laughs> and, uh, the graceful script. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, well, I must say you've been very helpful. Have I? Yes, I can't think. Well, I didn't think of it myself, of course. Marry again. Again? Yeah. And you know, I think I have just the woman in mind. I wonder, may I borrow your telephone? Mrs. is Stoppard. Gladys. Would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, yes, that'd be lovely. Right. It's very civil of you. Here we are. Keep the place nice. <coughs> I have four lumps of sugar, please, and I have some of them sweeteners. They're on my diet. <laughs> Will you help yourself? I must catch the post. Right, oh. Ooh, I say. Custard cream. I love them. Only allow myself one a day. This will take me up to weeks next Thursday. Hello? It's me, Patrick. Who? Patrick. Patrick Glover. How many Patricks do you know? Oh, Mr. Patrick Glover. Well, this is Mrs. Stoppard, cleansing operative. Last time I come in, you tripped over my bucket. I'm sorry about that. Look, I'll come straight to the point. Well, you... You know how I've always felt about you. Well, I was wondering... Will you marry me, darling? I, I realise that this is all a bit sudden, and you'll obviously want time to think it over. So I tell you what, I'll be round in 20 minutes for your answer. See you then. Bye. Impetuous man. I thought he'd never even notice me. Gladys, are you all right? That's why I tripped over my bucket. He must have been bedazzled. Who? Mr. Glover. He's coming round in a minute. I must go and make myself lovely for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Thirteen pounds a week for a tiny flat, and they want F and F. They certainly do, asking that price. I've looked at dozens of places, and I can't afford any of them. You don't suppose Daddy could be right, do you? Certainly not. And even if he is, you keep looking, kid. There's one more to try. Got to ring back before twelve. Patrick! Georgie, darling. Well, I'm here, so what have you got to say? Well, I suppose the appropriate thing to say would be, hello, Patrick. Hmm? What's this? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, it was a dozen red roses till I came through the revolving door downstairs. <laughs> Still. You put them in my coffee cup. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> oh, well, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> well, Georgie, are you going to say yes? To what? Ah. <laughs> good old Georgie, always playing hard to get. <laughs> oh, good old Patrick, always playing hard to understand. Mr. Glover. Patrick. You came. Yes. I knew you would. I've been making myself beautiful. You have? Thinking over the last tender words you spoke to me. Bloody bucket. I'm very confused. So am I. Mr. Glover, here. <laughs> um, before I accept, before I acquiesce, there is something I think you should know. Hmm? You wouldn't be the first. To what? Well, I was just a slip of a girl and I met this G.I. in the blackout. I was blinded by a pair of nylons and a banana. Say it doesn't matter to you. It, it, it doesn't matter to me. Look, I've had a very harassing morning and there are one or two things that I you want... You do to... want me, don't you? 
want you? I mean, I will do. Do? Oh, I see. You want to look after me. And you, me as well. Well, naturally, but... You won't find me lacking in anything. I've cleaned up more messes than you could ever make. Uh, really? And as for cooking, oh, you never tasted food like what I can cook. I'm sure. As for the other... <laughs> hmm? Well, that GI taught me a thing or two, I can tell you. <laughs> yes, they're very advanced, the Americans. But, uh, Miss... Uh, Gladys. Miss Gladys, I'm afraid I'm accommodated. Oh, that's just middle-aged, dear. Hmm? With a little help from your friend. No, 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 that, 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 that's what I mean. I, I've got a little help. But not, not from a friend, from my nanny. Your nanny? Hmm. She must be getting a bit past it by now, isn't she? Oh, no, no. She's very agile and capable. <laughs> you mean you and her like together? Well, not together, no. I, I'm usually sitting at my desk working out plots while she does it on her own. Doesn't sound very satisfactory to me. Oh, it works out all right. Besides, I'm afraid my resources won't stretch to two. No, oh, well, not sitting at your desk, no. <laughs> Still, I'm determined not to let another woman stand in my way. You must have wanted me or... Gladys, I do think you should let Mr. Glover make the decision. Yes, 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 you're quite right. Besides, I did want to have a personal and private conversation alone. Oh, yes. You come in my cubby, old no, me. No, 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 I, I, I mean with her. <laughs> oh, yes, I see business before pleasure. <laughs> well, the other way round, actually. <laughs> I'm asking her to marry me. You what? You what? I said so on the telephone not 20 minutes ago. Not to me. Well, of course it was to you, darling. No. Well, I mean, if it wasn't to you, who the hell else could it have... Oh, dear. <laughs> Look, I, I didn't mean it, I assure you. Cast me aside like an old sock, would you? I'm not good enough for you, eh? Well, let me tell you something. I am not rubbish. I may not be dressed in the height of fashion. I may not be sought after by the jet set. Perhaps I haven't been photographed exchanging witty pleasantries with Lord Snowden up Ascot. But I'm not rubbish, mate. It's people like me what have made Britain what it is today. Yes, I can well believe that. And her, you can take her to your harem with your nanny. But don't ask me to make up a four. And you, you can find another old bag to do your cleaning. <gasps> And how was Miss Georgie? Oh, she was fine, Nanny, fine. Trouble is, she didn't say yes and she didn't say no. To what? Well, let's just say that I've just sown the first seeds to making her a mother. You need a cup of tea. I need a drink. Well, I've found one. Found what, darling? A flat I can afford. I can move in next Monday. Well, I hope you're pleased one of your daughters is happy. <laughs> He seems to be taking it well. I thought he'd have tried to stop you. He did. But I talked him round. Steady, Richard, right. steady. Go, go easy, go easy. That's fine. That's better. Good, good, yeah, good. It's all right, sir. I think you'd let go now. I already have. Oh. Not much more stuff, Karen. Right. Richard, hmm? the band's out here. Oh, sir. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Sorry. Oh, all right. Well, all your bits and pieces are on the van. And now my little girl is ready to leave home. You're not going to cry, are you? Oh, oh no, no, of course not. It is quite a moment, though, isn't it? Sit down, darling. You know, it's at moments like this when I feel that there's lots of advice that perhaps I should have given to you over the last 18 years. Perhaps I can best sum it up by saying... Don't drop them, whatever you do. Exactly. What? Glass animal, sir. Oh! oh I see. <coughs> yeah, I see. Now, no, no, where, where was I? I think you were all set to warn me against premarital sex and how without love it is but a hollow sham. Yes, yes. <laughs> it doesn't seem much point now, does it? <laughs> Well, it's all right, sir. I think some of them are still intact. Sure, I'm not very good as a removal man, but you know, Karen's sister that I... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. 
few singles. <laughs> Tuesday? What happened on Tuesday? Nothing, Daddy. Why don't you let me drive you to this new flat of yours? Oh, no, no thanks. I want to get it all fixed first. Well, I, I, I don't mind. I do. Yes, but I mean, Richard and Karen are helping you. Why can't I? Well, they're not fathers. Just give me a couple of days to settle in. Very well, darling. Oh, Daddy, we'll still see each other. I won't be far away. Oh, no, 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 of course. I mean, you know, you're, you're quite right. This, this is a happy occasion. We mustn't be sad about it. I'd make for a little going away pie. It's true, Bob. You always used to like my husband. Come along, Nanny, come along now. Pull yourself together. <laughs> Goodbye, Daddy. Bye, my darling. No. Bye, darling. I'm coming back. Oh, yes, yes. Don't worry, sir. I'll see she gets there safely. And don't forget a hollow sham. Come on, H.D. Isn't it quiet, Nanny? Yes, it is. Thus, with her father, for a certain space, dwelleth this flower. I beg your pardon? The clerk's tail, Nanny Chaucer. Yes, Mr. Patrick. Now, would you like a nice cup of tea? I feel so empty. Would you like a slice of cake? Food won't help. Oh, Mr. Patrick, you mustn't go on like that. Life has to go on, you know. Were you never a father, Nanny? No, Mr. Patrick. Well, there you are. You see, you don't feel things the way I do. The song is ended, but the melody lingers on. Where is that sound of music? It's at the Odeon this week. Yeah. No, I meant about the house, Nan. The laughter, the chatter, the gaiety, it's all gone. It's at times like this when I feel old age and loneliness creeping over me. But she's only been gone three minutes. Stand there. Put it down somewhere. Oh, Richard! You are a clumsy twit. Yes, I am, aren't I? Well, I must say, this flat, you know, it's certainly... Um... I'll go get over stuff. Well, what do you think? Hmm. I can understand why you didn't want Daddy to see it. What's in there? That's the kitchen. Kitchen? And that's the dining room. That's all I could afford. You won't know this place when I finish with it. All it needs is demolition. Don't be funny. Oh, blimey, what's that? It's the downstairs loo. Oh, great. If someone in the house gets the trot, you get insomnia. I don't care. It may not be Windsor Castle, but at least it's a place of my own. You rang my doorbell. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. It must have been my chest. Uh, well, you know, not my chest, my, my, my girlfriend's sister's chest. Right. I, I'll give you a hand. Oh, thanks very much. It's on the top floor. Uh, 
All right. Daddy had found a luxury flat. Well, you know what he's like. It was only a white lie. And it is the worst kind. Uh, this is the gentleman from the ground floor flat. Uh, this is Anna. I'm Larry, the token black tenant. Hi, this is Karen and Richard. They're helping me move in. This whole room just for you? Man, you could have get 12 of my kind in here, you know. <laughs> I must say, you've certainly got a sense of you. What's the landlord like? I don't know. When him come in, I just limbo out of sight under the wardrobe. Don't but... listen to him. He couldn't limbo under the marble arch. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm just moving in. I'm Maggie. Has he been doing his chocolate-coloured goon act again? Something like that. Ignore it. We live downstairs. When you've unpacked, come and have a coffee. Thanks. We will. Come on, you. Your watermelon's getting cold. Well, hush, Mama. Pierre Leblanc examined the gun. He scratched his nose, wiped it carefully, and put it in his pocket. Eleven, please. Ah, oh, thank you, Nanny. How's the writing coming along? Oh, it's dreadful, Nanny, dreadful. For these last couple of days, I've had nothing but peace and quiet. I can't stand it. Noise, bliss, bliss. His thoughts now turned to Petey, the belly dancer. He wondered if she would come across. She usually did. LeBlanc now realized that he was alone in the room. He glanced towards the door. Slowly, the door handle began to turn. LeBlanc froze. Then, in a flash, the door swung open, and there stood... Mr. Phillips! Hello, Patrick! What did I say? Thirty-three to one, and it romped home! Without a jockey, it doesn't count. Well, unfortunately not. However, it's still not too late to recoup your losses. My losses. Our losses. Your losses. All right, well, let's not quibble about words. Wait, sorry, wait. The three o'clock at Chepstow. Look, Auntie May. Auntie May! <laughs> if that's not a good omen, I don't know what it is. We don't happen to have an Auntie May. That is a defeatist attitude, Patrick. I'm just slipping round to Anna's, Daddy. Oh, hello, Uncle Philip. Hello, Elise. She forgot to take Che Guevara. I can't keep up with these popsicles. Look, when am I going to be allowed to see Anna's flat? Oh, give her a chance, Daddy. She's decorating like a mad thing. And as soon as she's finished, she's going to ask you around to dinner. Bye. Bye. All right, but you know your mother's not going to like this when she hears about it. So, uh, Anna's left home, has she? Yes. And, uh, Barbara doesn't know. No. Hmm. Shall we say, uh, ten quid? Five. Thank you. As soon as you've done this bit, I'll put this up. This is ridiculous. It'll never work. Oh, it was worth a try. The place is beginning to look a bit better. Do you really think so? No, I lied. Have you seen anything of your downstairs neighbours? I was down there yesterday for coffee. They've got a super flat. Fitted carpets, modern furniture. They even bought their dry rot from Harrods. Not like this dump. Aren't you happy here? Do you think you made a mistake? Shall I tell Daddy? No, I'm not. Yes, I did. And in answer to your third question, I'll tell Daddy when I'm ready. You say for lunch? It's sausages and beans. In a whitewash sauce? No, thanks. The bloated body of Nyarchus drifted upside down in the... <laughs> now, pay attention, H.D. Don't let your mind wander. In the slime of the canal, a rat swam past and nibbled at his... Hello? Have you ever thought of rubbing your head with a boiled beetroot? Hello, Mother. Uh, no, I haven't. Is there any reason why I should? It's an old country remedy. You did say you'd lost all your hair when I talked to you on the telephone. Mother, you've got hold of the wrong end of it. Have I? Oh. Hello? Hello? Patrick? Uh, uh, hello, Mother. Uh, Mother? It's no use. I can't hear you that way. Look, darling, I've got a full head of hair. I can see it across the room. Oh, good. Then you did buy a wig one. Yes, that's right, Mother. Oh, look, Mother, darling, the front door bell is ringing. I'd better go and answer it. No, 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 Mother. Mother, Mother look... It's all right, Nanny. I'll get it. It'll be Karen. 
Before I do, inside. Barbara! Hello, Hello. Patrick. Uh, is Bill with you? Uh, no, he's not. Huh. Aren't you going to invite me in? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Yes, please do, yes. <laughs> I thought you two were in Nice. No, no, Paris. On your card, you said it was Nice. I said it was nice. Oh, <laughs> We came back on Tuesday. <laughs> I your suitcase. I thought you meant that. <laughs> Suitcase? What are you doing with a suitcase? Well, I thought you might put me up for a day or two. What? You see, I've left Bill. What, again? He's my husband. He's almost as bad as you were. Oh, Miss Barbara! Oh, and Mrs. 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 Hello, Mrs. Mrs. Just a minute. Mrs. Just, Mrs. just a minute. <laughs> what do you mean, left him? Uh, Nanny, I would love a cup of coffee. Yeah. Of course. Oh, isn't this a surprise, Mr. Patrick? Yes, isn't it? I repeat, what do you mean, left him? We had a blazing row. He broke your wedding present to us. The Ormolu clock, but how? Well, he ducked when I threw it at oh. him. Hello, H.G. Oh, never mind the wretched dog. Well, anyway, one thing led to another, so I walked out. For good? Well, that depends on him, doesn't it? I mean, if he wants to come crawling back, that's new. Uh, but you left him. Don't confuse the issue. <sighs> Who gave you that? My agent. George. Yeah. Uh, Georgie. Oh, yes, of course. She's a woman, isn't she? Yes. I always forget. Yes, lovely girl in the right light. Now, look here, Barbara. Does Bill know that you're here? No. Well, then how can he come crawling back? Love will find a way. Oh, my God. This is the third time you've left Bill. The first time you went to your mother, the second time you went to his mother. I appreciate you've run out of mothers, but why me? My children are here. Oh, for heaven's oh, sake. Besides, I didn't think you'd mind, just oh, for a day or two, just to teach Bill a lesson. goodness After thing. all, it was your wedding present that started know, it all. I know, I know. Mummy, what a super surprise. Hello, darling. <laughs> Daddy didn't say you were coming. Daddy didn't know. Here we are. Uh -huh. there, shall I take your suitcase upstairs? You are staying. Oh, well... Oh, all right. You can have Anna's room now. She's got her own flat. She's got what? Oh, she's got a flat of her own. Uh, on her own. <laughs> she moved in on Monday. Well, Patrick, is that wise? I mean, she's only 18. What sort of a flat is it? Well, I mean, it's... It, it, uh, it, uh, well, how, how would you describe it, Karen? Well, it's a sort of... Um, um, <laughs> uh, 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 you haven't even seen it. Uh, I, I, uh, no. Coffee? I think it's your sister, Karen, is it? Yes, she sounds a bit excited. I hope you didn't mind me giving her your number. But you said I could. No, that's OK. Look, I've got to catch the shops before they shut. Shut the door when you finish. OK. Hello? Hello, it's me. Listen, you've got troubles. Daddy's on his way round to look at your flat. Oh, no! Yes, Mummy insisted. She really had a go at him. Mummy? Well, what's she doing there? She's left Uncle Bill again and she's staying here for a few days. But I can't let him see my flat. He'll only say I told you so. All right. Well, thanks for telling me. Well, I, well, I just have to, to... to buy some somewhere else. Hello, darling. Hello, Daddy. For you. Oh, flowers. Karen told me you lived on the fourth floor. Yes, well, you see... I must say, this is nice. This is very nice. Yes, it yes. is. Yes, you have done well for yourself. What? Uh, and your own telephone, too. I must make a note of the number before I go. You don't mind me looking around, do you? Liberty Hall. Liberty Hall. <laughs> now then, what's in here, eh? The kitchen. The bathroom. Oh, no, this must be the kitchen, then. Possibly. Possibly? Possibly. You'd like a drink. Drink? <laughs> you mean you've got drink in your flat? Not exactly what you call drink. Just something for the odd visitor. Odd? What's odd about your visitors? Well, nothing, Daddy. It's in the kitchen. Well, I must say, darling, you really have... No, wait a minute. That's the bathroom. <laughs> you don't know your way around your own flat. No. <laughs> but I'm learning very fast, Daddy. <laughs> yes. Well, I must say, darling, this really... Oh. I see you've thrown out your little chest. What? Your painted chest, darling. Oh, that. Yes. The drink. Oh, don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, you know, darling, it, it's not the same at home without you. Not the same at all, no. We all miss you very much. I, uh, I brought you a little present. Something I thought you might like. Oh! It... I'll put it there. It's one of my favourites. It's one of mine too, Daddy. The eyes seem to follow you all round the room. Yes. 
Oh, darling, I am so pleased for you. And here was I, all prepared to say, there are two beds. Where? Where? Oh, yes, there are two beds. Uh, one there and one there. Well, there is an explanation. Hmm? It's perfectly simple. I share it. Share what? The flat. Oh. Well, I couldn't possibly afford a place like this on my own. So this friend and I, we go halves. I see you share. Oh, well, that's all right then. My word, your mother will be pleased. I'm absolutely furious. I don't care how nice the flat is. She's not old enough to live on her own. She's not on her own. She's sharing it. All young girls do that these days. I'm not talking about young girls. I'm talking about our daughter. Well, she's only 18. Exactly, and living in a flat. I mean, anything could happen to her. Oh, not to her. What do you mean, not to her? She's a very attractive girl. No, what I mean is, I... Well, I had a long talk with her about uh, sex when she was 13. Really? Yes. I learned a lot of things I never knew. That I can believe. Who on earth is that? It can only be Karen's boyfriend. I'll get it. It'll be Richard. Now, look, Barbara. I'm terribly sorry. I'm afraid I've jammed the doorbell again. It only does that when you come. Oh, Karen. Look, uh, Karen, um, I've been thinking. Perhaps this is not a good moment to speak to your father. Why not? Well, I've just run over his lawn sprinkler. What's he like, then? Richard? Hmm. Well, he means well. At least I hope he does. Oh, Mr. Patrick, dinner will be ready in five minutes. Oh, thank you, Nanny. It's just like old times, having both of you here together again. Go on. Daddy, Richard's got something to say to you. Oh? Yes. Uh, I'd like a word with you, sir. Um, sorry, good evening, Mrs. Sir. Good evening. I'd, li I'd like a word with you, sir. Um, man to man. Barbara. Of course. I'll go and help Nanny with the dinner. Yes, it's about uh, Karen, sir. Your daughter. <laughs> I do know who Karen is. <laughs> good, good. Yes, well, it's about me and uh, cigarettes, sir. No, thank you very much. Uh, I've got a light in here somewhere. No, Rich, Richard, Richard, you, you've got my finger. Sorry, sorry. No, oh. that's, 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 no, thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Silly little wheel. There we are. You see, no, uh, Richard, the... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm oh well, I, I, I didn't really want one, actually, thank you. Well, you see, sir, you know, we've, uh, we've been going out now for some time, and, uh, well, she thought, I thought, was... In fact, that is, we both thought... Uh, You're far too young. I hadn't finished yet, sir. Get engaged. Yes, we both thought we'd get engaged. Now you can say it, sir. My dear Richard... <laughs> Cigarettes, I guess. Uh, no, 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 no. We've we, we tried that, Richard. Now, look up. Why do you want to get engaged? Well, it's a way of getting to know each other, sir. Better. I mean, uh, you wouldn't buy a motorbike without first riding round the block first. Well, I fail to see the connection. Unless, of course, you're planning to ride my daughter round the block. No, sir. Though, why don't you sit down, Richard? <coughs> I, uh, I realize I'm not making a very good... Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> It's all right, it's only the head, and uh, I have broken it before. Yes. Well, um, perhaps another time, sir, when you're, when you're not so angry. Um, I'll raise the matter again. Richard, the door opens inwards. Sorry. Quiet. Oh, sir, I think that's yours, I believe. Well? He's, um, thinking about it. Oh, brother. Mr. Patrick. There we are. Candles? Have the lights fused or something? I just thought it'd be nicer without. You always used to dine by candlelight when you were... when you were together. Now, if you just sit there, Miss Barbara. Thank you, Nanny. And you here, Mr. Patrick. Everything's ready. The wine is chilled. Karen's gone out, so you won't be disturbed. <laughs> the bloody woman's matchmaking. But she hasn't missed a trick. Oysters. She'd make 
made me change. I suppose I'm expected to give you that. Oh, I never knew you cared. But if she thinks we're falling for anything as blatant as this... It's ridiculous. Still, I wish Bill could see me now. This really would make him jealous. Don't say things like that. You know what a violent temper he's got. <laughs> He'd probably murder you. Exactly. I mean, what's he going to think if he discovers you're here? Well, he'd have to be pretty nasty-minded to think anything. Oh, good. Yes, mind you, Bill is pretty nasty-minded. All the same, I don't like it. I mean, I don't want to break up his marriage. Why not? He broke up yours. Yes, that's very true. After all, he's got no reason to be jealous. Bill doesn't need a reason. If he had his way, I'd wear a chastity belt to open the door to the milkman. All the same, I think... Oh, I see. Look at that. Hmm? Capo de Grappa. Oh, do you remember when we first had that? Was at that tiny bistro just beside the vineyard. And that little man playing his accordion. You could see the moon shining through the jasmine on the trellis. The air was full of the scent of flowers. I picked your wild rose on the way home. Do you remember? You pricked your thumb and got blood poisoning. Three weeks in a Spanish hospital. I never did like that wine. Neither did I. I'll get some Chablis. Hi, Nanny. Oh, Mr. Mossman. Where's Patrick? I must see Patrick. Corkscrew. Ah, there he is. Hello, Bill. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Nanny. Hello, Mr. Patrick. That'll be all, Nanny. She's left me. Oh, Nanny? Hmm? Oh, no, Barbara. Barbara? <laughs> Barbara who? Oh, Barbara. Left you. She walked out uh, this morning. It's another man! Yes, yes, yes I'm, I'm, I'm sure you will. You, you, you don't know where she is, then? No. Good, I'll see you out. But I want to talk to you, Pat. What? Right, tell you what, let's go upstairs. But why? Right. To be quiet, are you see? I see. Yes, right, we won't be over her. Yeah, come in, Bill. Come in. Now then. Why don't, why don't you sit down, eh? Oh, thank you, Patrick. Glasses. <laughs> Glasses. Oh, here we uh, are, Patrick. Oh, no, no. Full of wine, old boy. Oh, here we are. You see? There, there. There we are. Now then, you, uh, you said, uh, you, uh, you said you wanted to talk to me, did you? I did? Hmm. What about? Well, I don't know. Oh, yes. I remember. I thought... I thought you and I might go out tonight. To look for Barbara, eh? <laughs> Barbara? Oh, no, let us chew for a bit. Shh. Oh, Skull. Oh, Skull, yeah. Skull. <laughs> Skull. Mm. No, I thought you and I mm -hmm. might go out tonight, you know, and pick up a couple of bits of stuff and... <laughs> Bill, that's hardly <laughs> the way for a married man to behave, you know. <laughs> but you're not married? No, but you are. I mean, think of Barbara, our wife. Uh, your wife. Barbara? Oh, lovely woman. She's left me, you know. Walked out this morning. Probably gone off with another man. Oh, come, 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 come. He won't get hold of him. I'll wring his bloody neck. He, he, he could be quite a nice fellow, you know. Well, I'll wring her bloody neck. Barbara wouldn't do a thing like that. I mean, I mean she, she's a one-man woman, always was. How do you mean? Well, I mean, she, she's a one-man woman to me, and now she's a one-man woman to you. But that's, that's two men. Yes, but only one at a time. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, Patrick, there's a barmaid yeah. at the jungle no. top and... No, no, Bill, not tonight. Bill, Bill, look, listen, listen, look. Yeah. Oh, what? Shush. What a, what a big mystery. Oh, well, you see, hey, it isn't convenient. Not convenient? I've, I've got an appointment, you see. You mean you've got a bit of faith? Yes. <laughs> yeah, what's she like? Well, well, she's, she's very like... Uh, you, you'd like her? Let's like have her. a face. No, 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 no. She, she, well, she hasn't got any... I mean, she's all... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 devil. <laughs> How about Friday, eh? That's my usual night. All right, well, if it's convenient, I'll let you know. <laughs> Jug and thumbs. You like that? Oh, you like that? <laughs> What did you win this for, eh? Wrestling? What? what? <laughs> did I hear Bill's voice? You did. Yes, it was the yippee that gave him away. Oh. Did he know I was here? No, he didn't. And I didn't tell him. Not in the mood he was in. He was upset. Well, let me put it this way. I, I very much doubt if you'll sleep a wink tonight. Barbara. No, Barbara, don't. <laughs> Barbara, remember Bill. Remember George and Barbara. Barbara did it. H.G. Uh, really. Uh, oh! 
I've told you to eat your bones in the garden. not to eat his bones in the garden. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising. Good morning. Morning. Sleep well? So, so. I didn't like the mattress in Anna's room very much. What was that? Oh, Barbara. Masculines. The hair colorizer for the He-Man. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be working. I've only just started drinking it. Do you mind? What was wrong on the mattress, anyway? Too hard. Oh, don't you like to hard mattress? All we do to... Oh, my God, I'd forgotten about that gargle. I used to like the mattress in our old room. It was nice and soft. Yes, I happened to be sleeping in that one. We could hardly share, could we? I don't see why not. Wouldn't be the first time we'd slept in a bed without any hanky-panky. Very possibly. But you might have gained a certain novelty appeal since those days. How do you mean? I mean, a man doesn't want beans for every meal. But when he hasn't had them for seven years... Beans? Well, he may have had beans, but not that particular variety. I've got... Oh, my God, what the hell? Odor, Madam Bovary? It's mine. Oh. Patrick, I've been thinking... This girl that Anna's sharing her flat with, yeah. what's she like? Oh, I don't know. Well, you should. Should I? Yes, yeah, so should I. Oh, not you? I may have been just a, a little bit unreasonable. Oh, surely not. No, 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 I was. Now, I think you ought to ask them both to dinner, and then we can see what she's like. Well, yes, that's, that's a very good idea. I, I'll give her a ring after breakfast. And after all, you'll be amazed with you know, Barbara. Sometimes you'll get ideas. What are you doing? I'm not going to get in the bath with my clothes off. You can't take your clothes off with me in here. But I haven't got anything you haven't seen before. Yeah, but it's not mine anymore, is it? No, it isn't there, Barbara. I mean, supposing Bill would... No, I don't like it. I don't like the idea of it at all. I think the whole thing... And I think you'd better lock this door behind me, too. Are you all right, Daddy? Yes, thank you. Oh, good job. Your readers can't see you now. The image has taken a bit of a knocking. Well, really. But you must know who it is. Look at it. To my own little darling. For the tenth time, I've never seen it before. It's not mine. I hope you're not suggesting it's mine. Look, when I came in, it was standing there. The eyes following me all around the room. Hello. Uh, oh, hello, darling. It's me. I beg your pardon? Yeah, I was wondering if... Oh, I'm so sorry. I think I must have the wrong number. I wanted... That's right, this is it. It is. 23 Belsize Park Avenue, ground floor flat. Yes. Who are you? Well, never mind about me. Who are you? And what are you doing there? Look, I live here, man. What? What do you want? Hello? Is something the matter, Mr. Patrick? There certainly is, Nanny. Anna's flatmate. It's a man. Oh, I can't believe it. Perhaps it was a girl with a deep masculine voice. No, 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 it wasn't, Nanny. I wouldn't have minded that. Yes, I would. Nanny, I've got to do something about this. A man rings up. Right number, right address. Says, hello, darling, it's me. As soon as I answer the phone, he rings off. I'm not a fool, you know. I've told you a dozen times I don't know. Was it him? Was it? How should I know who it was? You answered the phone. <laughs> What has he got that I haven't got? Oh, get back to your wood pile. Don't change the subject. You're impossible. You can believe what you like. I'm going to have a bath. Look, why is it every time we have an argument, you have to have a bath? Yes. Oh, good morning. Are you the caretaker or do you just work here? Neither. I wonder if I could come in for a moment, please. <clears throat> Wait a minute. It's you. Yes, that's right. It's quite a good one of me, but I, I have had better ones taken, though. I wonder if it'd be good enough to call the owner. I have a few words to say to him. I am the owner. You live here? Yes. It was you on the telephone? Yes. Well, that puts a different colour on the whole affair. Where is she? Having a bath, if it's any of your business. It is. I've come to take her away. Have you? How would you like a fat lip? Now, look here, young man. I don't know how they behave where you come from. Hammersmith, same as here. Don't prevaricate. 
She's coming back to live with me. Coming back to live with you, you dirty old man. I beg your pardon? You're old enough to be her father. I am her father. You're her father? Yes. That means she's your daughter. I congratulate you on your powers of deduction. Hey! I didn't know you had a touch of the whitewash brush. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Please. We haven't really met. I'm Larry. How do you do? I'm Patrick. Now, now, will you please stick to the point? Well, forgive me, but you must admit you don't look like a banana loader. Is there any reason why I should? No, I suppose not. Well, then why mention it? The point is you are living here in this flat with my daughter and it's got to stop. Why? Because it is wrong. But we're married. That is the most feeble ex... Married? Yes, you know, vicar, confetti, organ, tum, 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 tum. Yes, yes, I, I do know the ritual. You couldn't come because you're in jail in Jamaica. She told you that? Yes, rum smuggling or something. My. God. Come out of there, young lady. You've got some explaining oh, to do. Please, we've got to get to know each other, haven't we, Dad? Dad? Oh, Come out of there at once. Do you hear me? Now, look here. A good snack on your bottom. Do... Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. Is there someone else in there with you? No. What? Wait a minute. You're the man in the photograph. Yes, yes. Well, aren't you pleased to see him? Pleased to see him? What have you been telling him? No, nothing. You nothing. said she was your daughter. Oh, she's not my daughter. And he's not my father. Are you sure? Well, I should know. Yeah, she should know. He's oh. twice my father's age. Exactly. I beg your pardon. And look at the colour of him. How dare you? You dirty old man. No, look, you've got the wrong end of the stick. I just wanted a woman. What? No, 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 no. I thought there'd be a girl here who could help me. Oh, no, yes. No, 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 no. No, you've got it all wrong. You see, I, I, I just made a simple mistake. It often happens. Daddy, I think there's something you should know. There you are, you see. <laughs> wrong flat. <clears throat> could I have my photograph back? Oh. So much for your brief feeling of independence. Bell top. Now that was enough. Sorry. That's enough. Help take these things indoors. And as for you, young lady... Oh, Daddy, it's I... great to be home. What? I didn't like whitewashed sausages anyway. Oh. Still think you ought to have given me my photograph back, though. Well, she's home for good now, Nanny. What a day I've had. You've got a visitor. Oh. Hello, Patrick. Good. Bill, good grief. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Where's... Out shopping. No, Nanny's just going out shopping. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, did you have a good time last night? Yes, did you? Oh, lovely, lovely. Was she? <laughs> <laughs> well done, old chap. Anyhow, I got talking to this uh, barmaid at the Jack and Tuppence. Just over 40, I should think. 40? If she was an inch. Yeah. Oh. Thing is, there are two of them. Well, there would be, wouldn't there? I mean, one either side. No, 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 two women. Oh. And she's got a friend now, Patrick. I thought you and I tonight might uh, <clears throat> make up a foursome. Huh? I do really think you ought to give the girls a... Oh, it's you. Barbara. <laughs> yes, it's Barbara. Barbara, yes, Barbara. She, she was just passing. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? He's been oh. saying how much he misses you. Has he? Yes, and Barbara misses you too, Bill. She said so last night. <laughs> last night? Yes. So, so she was your appointment? Yes. With nothing on? Oh, no, no. Are you trying to tell me that you slept with Barbara last night? Yes, 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 I mean, no. no. You mean she was here, but she didn't sleep? Yes. No, I mean, no, no Bill, you wouldn't hit a man who can't find his glasses. And I don't be silly, you two. Nothing, absolutely nothing happened. I don't believe it. Barbara is a highly desirable woman whom I happen to love. Oh, Bill. Shut up. And you tell me that nothing happened? Well, I mean, no. Now, Bill, I should warn you, I'm not afraid to scream. Will you stop placing me around the house? Now, look here. Now, now look here. Now, I, I don't want to come between you two. I mean, I think you're ideally suited. I, I, know, that you're, I know that you've both got your faults. And what exactly do you mean by that? What do you mean well, by I mean, that? Bar Barbara, she's untidy and extravagant. Bill, he's got a violent temper and the morals of an alley oh, cat. How dare but you I, criticize I, I, my husband like that? He may be a, a lecherous good for nothing, but he means well. Yes, thank you, dear. And what if it's Barbara is uh, uh, an untidy slut? So what? Yes. It's no concern of yours. None at all. No, but you keep your to... nose out of our affairs. I quite agree. Come and help me pack. And you mind your own damn business. I quite agree. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm glad I managed to sort that out, Nanny. Ah, well, you know, these last two days have reminded me what married life is like. And now I see what it's like. I thank God I'm single. Hello? Patrick, I've come to a decision. You have? I've decided I will marry you. You will? Well, that's what you want, isn't it? 
Oh, yes. Mind you, you have an advantage over me. Have I? You know what married life is like. Thanks for keeping my bed warm, Mummy. Oh, my pleasure, darling. Anybody doing anything on the 24th? Why? Oh, nothing. I'm getting married, that's all. Married? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. 24th. I think you'll find it's next Saturday. Yes, I might just be you in after Mr. Robinson and Miss Peebles. The happiest day of their lives, too. Not altogether. I'm burying them. So you want me to marry you? To him, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You see, we, we were wondering whether the divorce would present any problem. Let's get you married first. No, no. I, I was married to another woman. You, you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tricky, tricky. The powers that be do not approve of divorced people being remarried in church. Oh. oh well, it'll have to be a registry office. Then. I'm sorry. I did once write a sermon on this very subject. Perhaps there's a writer you'd like to see. Oh, uh, well, it's hardly my field, actually, but uh, actually, M Miss Thompson here might be interested. She's a literary agent. A literary agent? I should explain that uh, uh, it is up to the bishop to approve of a divorcee being remarried in church, but our bishop is very accommodating. Now, I have inside some collected sermons of mine, which should make a bestseller. <laughs> the Godfather's done very well, so it shows religion is on the up and up. Now, I have titled them separately. One has called Pornographilia, which I yes. believe is a witness. It's going to be a very quiet, small wedding, Nanny. Very small. In fact, I doubt if I shall even be there myself. Oh, Mr. Patrick. Well, I mean, 11 o'clock in the morning. The, the whole ceremony will be drowned by the dawn chorus. I'm not surprised half the guests said they could only come to the reception. However, now, let's see, Mother, she'll, she'll be in the church, and so will Bill and Barbara. Philip? Oh, he won't be there. Oh, dear. Uncle, oh, George's Uncle Arthur, he'll be there, yes. He's giving her away. Oh, it's a lovely ring. Yes, it is nice, isn't it, Nanny? Georgie chose it herself, of course. She's got a very small... Oh, hell, I've got it stuck. Oh, I think I'll wear these for the wedding tomorrow. That'd be lovely, darling. Oh, you look like... <laughs> Nanny! Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Patrick, I'll get some butter. It's all very exciting. I wasn't at your first wedding. Of course you weren't. You weren't even born, darling. Were you? No, 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 of course you weren't. No. Daddy, that dog next door's got a wee bit on the lobelias. Karen. Now, now, I'm glad you're here. Look, I want to work with you two girls. Will you sit down? Now, look. <clears throat> When Georgie comes to live here, I want you to look upon her as your mother. We've already got a mother. Yeah, well, you can have another one living in. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Nanny. It's unsalted. Oh, good, Nanny. I'm glad about that. That'll make all the difference in the world. Well, I think the whole thing's unfair. If you're not too old to get married, then I'm not too young. But Karen, but God, uh, Nanny, that hurts. I'm 17 and Richard's 22. So together that makes us nearly 40. As old as you. Flattery will get you nowhere. Whoop. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Butterfingers. <laughs> Butterfingers. Well, I'm still a shriveled old spinster and you're plunging in for the second time. Plunging in? <laughs> you don't imagine I want to get married again, do you? I'm only doing it for your sakes. Us? Yeah, yes, us. Yous. You. I see. So you don't love Georgie. You never have. Oh, yes, I have. I'll put the kettle on. I, I, I'm very fond of Georgie. I always have been. Well, she's a brick. You can't marry a brick. Poor Georgie. You're just using her. It, it's immoral. Now, Karen. Well, I don't approve. Oh, I see. So you don't approve, young lady. Well, that's very interesting, isn't it? Yes, very interesting. And what exactly do you intend to do about it? I got it stuck again. Nanny, more butter! Karen. Karen. Richard. Not that room. It's Daddy's. Why couldn't you have walked out the front door like everybody else? Oh, don't be so unromantic. Careful, careful. Don't look down. Could you at 
behind that other ground floor window. Oh, stop moaning. Do you love me or don't you? Of course I do. Well, show it then. Halfway up a ladder. Ka Karen, Karen, I can't see. Oh, be quiet. Oh. Ah! Oh, Richard, to be quiet. Now. You're right. Well, Gretna Green, here we come. <laughs> it must, must be the plugs or something. Open up the bonnet. Try it now. Huh? Try it now. Turn it off, turn it off. What are you doing, young man? Oh, um, I'm... Uh, the car won't start, sir. Good morning. Uh, just a minute, I'm coming down. <coughs> coming down. Get me to the ladder! Do you know what the time is? Uh, ten to seven, sir. Uh, A.M. Yeah, th th thank you very much, Richard. And may I ask, what are you doing here at ten to seven A.M.? Well, you know, uh, I was passing by and I thought uh, I'll pop in to see uh, to see Karen, mm -hmm. and then it, it's far too early, so um, I'll go. That's the first sensible thing I've heard you say. Thank you very much, sir. Don't mention it. Uh, but the engine won't start, sir. Hmm? Well, well, no wonder. The high tension lead from the distributor has come adrift at the coil. Here, look, that. It should be there, right. like that. Now, now try it now. Thank you very much. Right. No. Uh. Oh, sorry. That's fantastic. That's fantastic, sir. You're a mechanical genius, sir. Look, next time you're passing, try and make it a little later, will you? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh. Morning, Milton. Got another rung up the ladder. <laughs> nanny, Na nanny, cufflinks. Where are my cufflinks? They're in your cuffs, Mr. Patrick. Oh, what a damn silly place oh, to put cufflinks. Oh, mother, darling. Oh, so you got the train all right, did you? Yes, dear. But I shall have to write a complaint to the railway company. Oh, really? Why? I booked a seat facing the engine. And when I got to the station, there wasn't one. No seat? No engine. Uh, oh. <laughs> Nanny, no, well, would you go and chase Karen up? If I know anything about her, she's probably still in bed. Yes. Hello, yeah. Granny. Oh, my darling. I don't know what you were so worried about, Patrick. Hmm? It looks very nice. Oh, what does, Mother? Your teepee. <laughs> I'll see who that is, will you, darling? Well... I'll get it, nuns. You'd better put this with the other presents, dear. It's a family heirloom. Mother, you shouldn't have. What is it? Don't bother. I think I can guess. Oh, oh you know Bill and Hello, Barbara, darling. of course. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I'm so glad you could make it. Oh, I didn't make it. It's a family heirloom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll go and put it with the others. 
I'm afraid the minute hand is rather fast. But it doesn't matter because the hour hand is rather slow. Oh, well, that's a bit of luck. <laughs> yeah, I think I do hope this outfit's all right. I mean, I was sure that Georgie wouldn't be wearing white. Barbara. I think you look super, Mummy. Thank you, darling. Better let me have the ring. After all, I am the best man. There we are. <laughs> oh, it's got butter on it. Oh, don't be silly, darling. <laughs> Unsalted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Patrick, Mr. Patrick, Karen isn't in her room, and she's left a note. Note? Oh, my God. Karen and her boyfriend. They've eloped to Gretna Green. What? Oh, dear. And I helped him start the car. Try it now. <laughs> what it can be? Oh, well, try the carburetor. Right. Sorry, so which, which bit is the carburetor? Oh, brother, some elopement. Three hours and we've only come half a mile. I'm starving. Well, it's not my fault, is it? By the time we get to Gretna Green, I'll be over 18 anyway. One's come home, now the other one's gone. Oh, my poor little girl. She's out there somewhere, lost in the snow. But it's not snowing. At a time like this, you give me weather reports. Oh, my baby. I remember the first word she ever uttered. She came toddling through that door, her chubby little arms outstretched, and she said, Dada, Dada. Mm, to the milkman. It's all your fault. You must have driven her to this. I haven't done a thing. I may have just wagged a finger. You brute. Barbara, now look here. I am her father too, you know. Half of her is mine. But you've lost my half as well. She has eloped. To Golders Green. Yeah. I've got the Automobile Association for you, Patrick. Oh, no, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, AA. Look, I want you to put up roadblocks on the A1, the M1, the A6. What? Well, blackboards then, every half mile, with a message written on it. <clears throat> uh, have you got a pencil? No, that's not the message. The message is Karen, come home, all is forgiven, father. Every half mile. What? No. No, I'm not a member. I resigned when you stopped saluting. Hello. Hello. W well, really. I'll just go and see if George has arrived. What am I going to do about Karen? I'm so worried. What, I, I telephone the police? The fire brigade? What, do you think she might be on fire? The Scottish Embassy. That's it. I'll telephone them. Well, well, the return of the prodigal twit. What happened? Oh, don't ask. Has Daddy found my note yet? Yes. I better go and tell him you're back. He'll beat the living daylights out of you. Why? Because he loves you and he's been worried. Oh, blimey. And he's all set to cancel his wedding. Well, I can't go in there and face him now. I'll tell you what to do. The main thing is, we mustn't let him know you're back yet, OK? Yes. And listen, what you should do is make an appointment. This is ridiculous. The Scottish Embassy isn't even listed. Oh, take it easy, Patrick. Try and relax. Relax? How can I relax? You, you do realise that this note could be a forgery. She may well be in the hands of the Mafia. I doubt it. I'm sure the Mafia can spell better than this. I'm going to telephone the police. No! At least let's wait for a moment. Why? Well, I've got this feeling that Karen might possibly want to telephone us to say that she's all right and is coming home soon. Feeling? We can't rely on a feeling. Hello. Daddy, it's Karen. I'm all right and I'm coming home soon. Karen, there you are. Where are you? Uh, well, uh, actually, um, I I'm in the hall of somebody's house. Whose house? Where is it? Uh, well, I, I can't really say, you see, uh, because uh, the man who owns it, well, he's got this terrible crabby temper, see? You, you, you mean you're not with Richard, then? No. But you are with a man. Darling, what sort of a man? Oh, he's harmless enough, Mummy. He's ever so old and wrinkled. But, darling, they're the worst sort. I mean, look at your father. Uh, uh, Karen. Look, Daddy, I am sorry about all this. No, darling, it was all my fault. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. It wasn't. Yes, it was. No. Will you stop interrupting while I'm interrupting? Now, look, Karen, darling, at least tell me which town are you in? Um, well, actually, I'm in the... in the... Uh, oh! I'm in Stuck. She's in Stuck. Look it up on the map. Stuck? Probably Poland. What a lovely surprise. Now, look, Karen, darling, just stay where you are. I will arrange for a plane to be... Was that Nanny's voice I heard just then? Uh, yes. She's there, with you, in Stuck. Yes. Put her on. Daddy wants to talk to you. To me? Hello? Nanny, how on earth did you get there? Well, I... I walked. Walked? It's impossible. I... I think you better speak to him, dear. Look, Daddy, I can explain everything. Yeah, yeah, yes, darling, I'm sure you can. But what I want to know is, how on earth did Nanny manage to get... Yeah, all right, Nanny, I'll be with you in a minute. How did Nanny manage to get to the... Nanny? 
Oh, look, uh, Karen, darling, stay where you are. I'm sure it isn't very far away. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. If I hurry, I should be home in time for the wedding. Yes, I'm sure you will. And everything's all right and you're not to worry. And no, it isn't. Because you're right behind me, aren't you? Yes, I am. And you're not very pleased, are you? No, I'm not. But you're probably thinking I'm not too big to have my bottom smacked. Exactly. Goodbye. Goodbye. In there, young lady. Now, look, darling, I don't want you to blame your father for all this. I don't. Don't you? Well, I do. Barbara. Darling, you were just upset because he was getting married and you weren't. Look, I'm only doing it for their sake. Miss Georgie, everything's all right. She's back home again. What a relief. <laughs> and, Nanny, this is my Uncle Arthur who's giving me away. How do you do? You surely don't think I want to get married? I'm only marrying Georgie to provide them with a mother. <clears throat> I mean, the whole idea... Hello, Georgie. The whole idea... Georgie! Hello, Patrick. Yes, hello. Good Lord, is that the time? We must be going. Uh, Patrick, <clears throat> I think you and I should share a car. We have one or two things to discuss. No, I, well, I, I... Patrick, I found Spitz, but there's no... St what else have we today? After the Glover wedding, you've got the unmarried mothers. I thought you were responsible for them. But I do want to get married, don't you? Well, of course I do. I've cancelled a dental appointment for this. Exactly. But, but, but just because I'm keen, it doesn't mean to say you have to go through with it if you're not keen. What does that mean? Driver, don't stop. Drive round the green. Georgie! Patrick, admit it. You've got cold feet. Well, perhaps I have. But I'll keep them on the far side of the bed. Yes. Yes. But are you keen? Well, of course I am keen. But are you? Well, of course I am. I tossed a coin and I'll stand by it. You tossed a... Driver, round the green again. It's a long way to this church. That's a bit callous. Not at all. I've had my hair done specially. Besides, there's the question of all those lovely presents we've been given. Exactly. And I've already tipped the organist. Driver, I think we'd better... Uh, no, no, we were yeah, going to tell you to stop! stop. This is ridiculous. If we keep going around like this, we'll disappear off our own exhaust pipe. How about tossing another coin? Uh, Georgie, we must decide this like mature, responsible adults. Now, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. We haven't got time. Well, if Patrick, we should make up our minds. No, Patrick, well, I... it's time we were in position. Huh? And it's very bad luck to talk to your bride before the service. Well, how should I know? I've only done it once before. Oh, come on. Come along, George. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, belt up, for heaven's sake. You're probably right. I'll manage. Ah, they're here. This is ridiculous. A man in this situation should be given time to think. Do it first. Think about it later. Oh, well, 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 Still time. Yes, it's quite a fault. Mm. Uh, didn't have notice where it is. No, well, you see the font. I couldn't tell by. I mean, it wouldn't be right. No, 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 no. Next to it is a door. Too late. Here comes the firing squad. Stiff up a little, son. Yes. Lie back and think of old England. Mother. Wrong side. gathered here in this place and in face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in here. Matrimony. 
which is an honorable estate and is a man in of St. Paul to be honorable among all men. Yeah, and therefore is sure not by any to be enterprised, nor taken such a in nice hand, unadvisedly, lightly, or wantonly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, duly considering the causes right. for which matrimony was ordained. Therefore, if any man can see or any just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever tell his peace. Nobody. They've deserted us. Patrick Goldsworthy. Sit well, Glover. Well, was this this woman well? Would I His father was very widely read. Oh. Matrimony. Will thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her so long as ye both shall live? Actually, we're just discussing it. I can't split it. Georgina Thompson, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? To live together in Pick sickness up. and in health, and forsaking all other, keep the only unto him so long as ye both shall live. Uh, no, thank you. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? Nobody does. And look, Vicar, we've changed our minds, haven't we? Uh, yes, Will you is. take her right hand and repeat after me? Uh, look, Vicar, Vicar. I, Patrick. Vicar, Vicar. Well, sit well, Glover. Vicar. Congratulations. <laughs> Richard, yeah. we didn't get married. Oh, not yet, dear. The Richard hasn't had any breakfast. Oh, all right, then. Karen, Richard, quiet. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> well, well, ladies and gentlemen, on these occasions, it, it's customary for the groom to say a few words during which he, he would thank the bridesmaids and the bride's parents. Well, well, we never had any bridesmaids today, and George has never had any parents. I, I mean, I, I mean, ha hasn't got any parents. So really, all I want to do is to thank those of you who came along to the church and the rest of you who, who could only come to the reception. <laughs> and also, Georgie and I would like to thank you all very, very much for the beautiful wedding presents that you've given us. So now, if you would identify them, we would be very happy to give them all back to you. <laughs> so, go along, Nanny, now, which is the first one? Uh, who gave us the toast? Oh, eh? Mr. and Mrs. Mossman. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, I know I was getting it back. I'd have bought something decent. So you're right. <laughs> now then, who gave us this beautiful lamp? Oh, that is yours, Daddy. But, oh, sorry, it is. Now, who gave us this? Don't tell me, I can guess. <laughs> there we are, darling. No, dear, it's your wedding, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's a family heirloom. <laughs> Come along, everybody. I think it's much better if you collect them yourselves, you know, by now. That's a very good idea. It's in most awful. Remember, you must only take your own, though. Don't take other people. Don't take our own, though, anyway. Good morning. Good morning. It's two pounds seven to this week. Oh, it's a sort of cancelled wedding reception. Oh, yes, that's nice. Oh! 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 Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Richard! Sorry I'm late, Patrick. Got held up by a photo finish. Just a little something. Look, sterling silver cutlery is set. I paid the deposit. You make the rest of the payments to this address. Philip. And, uh, congratulations. 
Oh, well, actually, we changed our minds. We didn't get married. You didn't? Congratulations! <laughs> Barbara! Georgie, mm -hmm. I've already booked the honeymoon. Seems a pity to waste it. Do you mind? <laughs>